for Todd Jones. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, thanks a lot, Teddy, for uh, and <laughs> uh, an attentive uh, overview of that position. And I just want to expand on a few points. Um, as it's very clear, if you read the motion carefully, uh, we're not trying to prescribe policy in any way. It's quite um, clear in the motion that uh, you, you want the Deputy Council of Housing to bring forward a report, assess options, improving the operation and regulation of this mode in Cambridge, and regarding the planning aspects, that future options, uh, including the, the target, the triggers, which uh, Councillor Martin today has talked about, um, should, should enable us to um, look at proposals relating to the forthcoming uh, Cambridge Local Plan 2014 to 2031. So these are not, this motion does not go out by the second stone, they're very much looking to uh, open the debate and to bring forward proposals. Um, going on to uh, a few other points. <coughs> um, Oxford did refer to, and I know there are other cities where we've uh, had examples of uh, additional licensing proposals being brought forward. I believe in Peterborough, Reading, and Swansea. Sometimes they're looking at the city wide approach, sometimes in certain areas. Uh, if this council could look at where best practice is, um, they can be based the part of the part of the <coughs> that report. Uh, we need an evidence base and not simply uh, rely on perhaps some, some of the commentary that we offered, which is a dark prediction about uh, uh, the uh, additional licensing policy driving at the cost of rent or uh, declining stock availability and reducing capacity in terms of vacant mode. That's not that we know come about. But we're not saying it, that that means there's no problem. We do want an evidence base, and that's essentially what part of this report would be about. Um, a, a few sort of um, specific points. At the moment, the, uh, the uh, HMA policy and uh, mandatory licensing is concerned relating to three stories and above. I believe that's a, a rather um, arbitrary uh, sort of rule of thumb measure which relates to fire service regulation and has to do with people who may have to evacuate from a building in the sector of fire from the third story or above. So we, we cannot deny that there must be properties in Cambridge, uh, two story or even single story, uh, that would need to meet those kind of fire regulations when we're looking at houses that uh, otherwise would come under additional licensing regarding HMO status. Um, in Oxford, they actually went through uh, some stages in introducing additional licensing. First of all, looking at bringing two-story properties into the equation, and then looking at uh, the three, uh, properties where there are three or more unrelated occupiers. So there, there, there's no prescriptive sort of big bang approach to this. We can look at different ways of doing this, depending on what the report that we, uh, we wish to see come about. Um, what evidence that, uh, that door is. <coughs> we all know in our own wards, I'm sure everyone who's been canvassing hard to come across the example in this campaign of uh, properties that are badly managed, they're not regulated, they're unscrupulous landlords, they're exploiting tenants, they're unsafe for accommodation, and this has an impact not just on the people who are living in these properties, but in the local neighborhood and in the local environment. Surely, we prefer, I'm sure, good landlord prefer. Would prefer a level playing field, a proactive regime from the council, ensuring inspection, proper standard, meeting fire and electrical safety requirements. Encouraging responsible landlords, I think, means encouraging responsible tenants, and they will be very much part of the community. Ensuring the safety, security, and quality of life of both tenants and their neighbours. So, to reiterate, we're just considering 